One of the fundamental types of reactions that transition metal complexes undergo are the addition, removal, or substitution of ligands. When a new ligand is simply added to a metal complex, this is called ligand association. And when a ligand leaves a metal complex, it's referred to as ligand dissociation. These processes are the exact reverse of one another. Ligand association can occur whenever a metal has an available coordination site and has room in its valence orbitals to accept the additional electrons that the ligand brings with it. This means that 18 electron complexes can't undergo ligand association. The smaller the total electron count and the more space is available around the metal atom, the more likely ligand association is to occur. If a single new ligand associates, the total electron count of the complex goes up by two. Ligand dissociation, on the other hand, typically occurs for coordinatively and electronically saturated compounds. That is, the higher the coordination number and the higher the total electron count, the more likely ligand dissociation is to occur. Whenever a ligand dissociates, the total electron count of the complex goes down by two. Chelating and polyhaptoligands are particularly resistant to dissociation, precisely because they are donating multiple pairs of electrons to the metal center. And if any single electron pair donor dissociates, it's still held close to the metal, and it's likely to reassociate rapidly. It's important to note that ligand association and dissociation don't change the oxidation state of the metal. So if an X-type ligand, which is by definition associated with a negative charge, associates to a metal, then the overall charge of the complex must go down by one. And if an X-type ligand dissociates, then the overall charge must go up by one. This is really just a statement of the law of conservation of charge. Ligand association and dissociation can occur together in a process called ligand substitution or ligand exchange. This is when an incoming ligand displaces an outgoing one all more or less at once. The mechanisms of ligand exchange vary across a spectrum. At one end of the spectrum, a ligand exchange reaction can occur by first having one ligand dissociate and then a new ligand associates. This is called dissociative ligand exchange. At the other end of the spectrum, the incoming ligand can first associate, followed by a second step in which the outgoing ligand dissociates. This is associative ligand exchange. Both of these extreme cases are two-step processes with a discrete intermediate. In the middle of the spectrum, both dissociation and association can occur simultaneously without a discrete intermediate. If both the association and dissociation happen exactly in tandem, this is called a pure interchange mechanism. But the mechanisms can also be other points along the continuum. An associative interchange mechanism involves a new ligand associating, but before it's fully associated, the outgoing ligand begins dissociating. Alternatively, the outgoing ligand can start to dissociate, and the incoming ligand can approach before it leaves completely. This is called dissociative interchange.